when it comes to creating a Christmas light display. If you've been looking around this hobby, you've been checking things out, you may see controllers of all sorts. In fact, I have a table full of controllers here today. And in this video, I want to talk to you all about controllers. What controllers right for you? And most importantly, how do you begin to figure out what is the best controller or controllers for your needs? Hi. I'm David from Learn Christmas Lighting. And right here, I've got in front of me a Falcon F4, oops, which is getting stuck on my table in a cable guard box. I've also got a Culp K8PB in the bag still. I've got somewhere over here a Culp K16 controller. Where did that thing go? <laughs> That's coming today. Uh, I used to have one, but one of my students needed one this past year, so I sold it to him. Um, so we got a Culp K16. Uh, we've got a um, Falcon. I've got an F48 still on my house because I haven't turned down my Christmas display yet. Uh, so at the end of the day, you see all these different controllers. You see Falcon, you see Culp, you see Raspberry Pis, you see Beagle Bones, and you might be like, okay, David, like, how do I figure out what the right controller is for me? Because ultimately, there's a couple things that I hold in really high regard here on the channel. And if you've been around here, you understand this. I care about reliability. I care about having a great show. And I care about ease of use and things being simple. Okay? And so the first question you've got to answer, there's really a couple things going on. And of course, in, as we go into the future, there will be other controllers. Falcon uh, David Pitts has already announced some new controllers that will be coming later this year. Is Okay, so you've got a couple options and a couple things to look at when you're running your show. The first thing is just physical locations, okay? Um, I'm going to talk about this in a couple videos because I recorded that one previous to this. Um, as to how many pixels you should run from your controller, but in general, when you're coming off of a controller board, whether it's something like this Culp, which I'm going to open here, or, you know, a Falcon F4, or an F16, or an F48 with the receiver boards, um, when you're running pixels off of a controller output, you generally want to go ahead and from the output on the pixel control board, the, the green terminal block as they usually are, you want to get your pixels and, and your lights within on data within 25 feet. Um, power often even closer to the control board. Okay. And so that's really the first thing that I look at when I'm looking at someone's display or one of my own and, and sizing a controller. You, can look at different spaces on your display in front of your house, on your business, wherever, and say, okay, I need, you know, this many ports here. I need four here. I need five here. I need 10 ports over there. Um, because ultimately this is going to help you determine what controller or multiple controllers would be best for you. Ultimately with any pixel display, there are multiple ways to slice the cake. As I like to say, you could do larger controllers with receiver boards. Got some Falcon receiver boards right here where you plop one of these receiver boards at all sorts of different areas and you have four ports here and here and here and here and here. Or you could drop individual smaller controllers like this Culp 8 controller, um, which also re has receiver boards and you can put these things in different places. Okay. Now the next question that we run into is okay, now that I've figured out where all my different ports are, okay, maybe I need like 14 ports over there, so I'm gonna go with a 16 port controller. I don't need long range ports there because I've got a mega tree or a bunch of stuff close together. I can power that all in that location. Once we worry about the physical, our next question is the data, okay? Most often in the past, most people run a wired network connection to their controllers, okay? Or they have a Raspberry Pi or a BeagleBone running FPP to run their show and they place it at their controller, literally like this F4. You know, I've got one of these in my attic, actually an Advitech Pixlite 4 that looks just like this. And I just put the Raspberry Pi in the box or in the lid and then it runs the show right inside the box and I can connect to the FPP wirelessly. Okay. 
Where wireless starts to become a little bit funky, though, is that um, we, we get these controllers, okay, like the Culps. So the Culps or some of the new Falcons coming out this year, and this is the next big thing, they actually run FPP on the controller itself. So this has a, a pocket beagle. Um, the Culp ones that have the PB in the name or the pocket beagle, they run wirelessly. And the ones with the B in the name are the, the regular beagle, okay? And they have a network port, but I believe they also can do wireless. And when you're running these guys, it can be okay to run wireless. Like, I'm not a big fan of running a lot of pixels wirelessly if you're sending that E131 or that ARTNET or DDP data. It can be done, but it's a lot of data. A lot of times people run into issues where things are, are slowed down, things get behind, you start skipping frames, um, and, and you generally have, you know, issues with that. Again, on smaller setups, it's not an issue, but as you expand or your neighbor gets a new router at his house and all of a sudden things aren't working right, whereas the wire pretty much always works right. So I don't like sending when I'm looking at controllers. I don't like sending um, the actual show data, the E131 or the ARTNET or DDP or ZCPP data. I know there's all these different types. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> I don't like sending that data wirelessly to controllers. I like to keep that wired. And traditionally with Falcon controllers and others in the past, that's generally how things worked, right? But with the Culp controllers or the new Falcon controllers, they can run FPP on each controller. The benefit of this is that all that's being sent between your different controllers are sync packets, where each FPP has the sequence for each part of your show on that particular controller. And so all that has to be sent between the two is just like a running clock, basically, that just says, okay, we're playing this sequence, here's where we are in it, and they all stay in sync. This is significantly less data over your wireless or wired network than if you're running all that E131 data um, or whatever protocol you use over a network. So that's when wireless starts to become intriguing. When you can start to do that, you can run wirelessly two controllers out in your yard or wherever and have it work flawlessly, okay? Now, of course, nothing's a perfect system, okay? So hopefully this gets you started thinking about controllers and what you could do. Um, because ultimately, you know, at the end of the day, um, choosing the right controller for you is not a one-size-fits-all type problem. There are a lot of options out there today, and in the future, there will probably be even more options, right? The key things to look for is the amount of ports you're going to need for the amount of stuff that you're running off them. You want to look at, are there long range ports, short distance ports, or a combination of both, like with many of the Culp controllers. And then last, are you looking to run things, is it, you know, if it's simple enough for you to run things wired, run a wired network connection to each box, get it done, easy. But... A lot of times, especially like maybe you are running something on the other side of your driveway or something like that, it may make more sense to run wirelessly. And when that's the case, when it makes more sense to run wirelessly and maybe use multiple FPP devices together um, in order to run that show completely wirelessly, that's the moment when you go, okay, I want to use a controller that has an FPP device built in or put an FPP device, uh, a Raspberry Pi or a BeagleBone, in the box with my controller, and then use the master remote functionality to be able to run your show that way. Hopefully this video didn't confuse you more than it helps you, but if you're brand new to this, hop over to learnchristmaslighting.com and grab my free guide that's going to help you begin with your first show. In fact, I'm going to give you the secrets, the things you really need to know before you buy anything. It's going to save you time, save you frustration. Make sure you go grab that. And while you're here, subscribe on YouTube, and we will see you in our next video. Thanks.